What's up, fam? It's time for a new Focus release. This time, it's version 1.0. This is probably the biggest release in Focus history, uh, not just because it's the 1.0 milestone, but because in 1.0, I've nailed down some of the key content uh, content creation, content, um, content styling features that you're going to want to use, and you can use these to replace page builders and all this other fancy stuff you've, you've been uh, accustomed to adding to your WordPress site, we're going to be able to get rid of all those. You're going to be able to create tremendous pages, awesome design outcomes from the comfort of the WordPress editor using these new features in Focus 1.0. And with that said, let's dive in. We're going to start by taking a look at the uh, the showstopper from this particular release. It's the full implementation of what I call full width bleed functionality. All right, so we'll take a look at what that is first, and then we can I'll show you how you can do this stuff with Focus 1.0. So we'll look at this page here, this little sample page. So what full width bleeds are, are delineations uh, that span the full usable width of your browser, whatever that is, whether it's on a, a mobile device, an iPad, or a full, full on thing like a desktop computer like I'm using here. Uh, these elements will span the full width of the device, and they have a, a color scheme associated with them. You actually have 18 different color schemes to choose from with Focus 1.0 for your bleeds, but it's smarter than just, uh, just the background color here. Other elements like block quotes, captions, um, bars, which we'll get into in just a moment, um, all of these things have been uh, calibrated to be output in colors that are complementary to whatever your bleed colors are. So we'll go to the documentation real quick here. And we will look at the full width bleeds. If we look at the uh, the full width layout bleed short code, at the bottom of this is a are examples of all of the different colors you can use on your bleeds. Okay, so and we I'll show you how to to institute these. I, I thought I had a better example of uh, some thoughtful color content within them. Uh, let's see if we can find something for you here. Here we go. If we look at this, you can see here's a block quote. This color is matched to the background. Here's a caption. This this color again matched to the background. Same sort of thing down here. This is just thoughtful little tweaks that make everything just a little bit, a little bit better, a little bit more refined. These are better design outcomes. Focus does all this for you in 1.0. This is just a, a thing that's built into the bleed functionality now, and you get all this stuff, and you don't have to think about it and I will show you how easy it is to add a bleed to your posts. All right, so let's go back to this one here, and we will add a bleed above the other bleed. Well, here's our bleed. I showed you this first one. It's the first thing in the content. Here's how we make those bleeds. All right, so we just, this, uh, the, the bleeds use a short code. It's something known as a short code in WordPress, and there's two types of short codes. One style is just like a straight up short code. It could be something like this, my short code, and you would you would just have only this thing, and it would output something. This tells uh, tells the, your software, your your design software, hey, do this thing, uh, do whatever it is we do when we see my short code, and this this you know, piece of code here would be replaced by whatever the actual output is. This is just known as a, just a straight up short code. Bleeds are a tag style short code where we have an opening and a closing tag and everything that appears between them is, is what is going to be the content of your bleed. Uh, because of this tag style arrangement, you still have to, uh, whether you're in the visual or the text editor, you still have to actually write this uh, you write the opening tag and then you write the closing tag at the bottom of your bleed. So you delineate the top and bottom. You make this choice yourself, but you actually have to add this in there. Th this won't output in the final result. As we've seen, those tags just get replaced by the design thing we're looking for here. But that's how it works. In the future, I'll have a button, an easy button to do this, but for now you have to add the opening and closing bleed tag. But uh, that is a small price to pay to get these cool results. And so the, the way you make, if you just put bleed like this without the style, uh, the style attribute, uh, if you just did a bleed, it would, it would just have a white background. It would not look like anything. So you want to add style and then a color delineation to give your bleed these cool background colors that are new in Focus 1.0. Uh, all the predefined color classes you can use are right here. They appear in the green text on, uh, 
on the full width layout bleed documentation page. You can just input these values and you will get these color schemes uh, output as a result. It is that easy. And now you have 18 of these, like I said, 18 pre, uh, pre-calibrated color schemes to choose from in your bleeds. This is all you need to make awesome pages. I'm currently using these on the DIY Themes website. I use them all over uh, and I'm using this new functionality for Focus 1.0, it is awesome. All right, so that's the showstopper for, for version 1.0, but we've got lots of other cool stuff too. Let's take a look at some of those things. So we've got um, a new bar content style class, and I will show you what that is. Here is a bar right here inside this bleed, and I will show you how to make a bar. So what we do now when we have some text that we want to set aside uh, over in uh, the space that's not being used by our content. Uh, so let me just give a little explainer on this real quick. So this website is running in readability mode currently. You can run yours in focus mode or readability mode. Focus accommodates both. Uh, readability mode shifts your text column of text over to the left. It's a constrained column of text uh, that's only X number of pixels wide, by default 644. Uh, so on, in readability mode, that column is shifted all the way over to the left. In focus mode, that column is centered on the screen. Obviously, if the content is shifted all the way over to the left, you've got more space out to the side here to accommodate a bar, but in focus mode as well, you, you still have limited space to accommodate a bar. And I'll show you a, an example of that on the DIY Themes website. I actually use bar on the uh, bar on the focus sales page, I do believe, possibly, maybe, maybe it's somewhere else. Okay, it's not on the focus sales page. Uh, Maybe it's on the Focus Cards page. It's somewhere, I've got bleeds somewhere in the way. Here's a bleed, boom. So obviously there's less room to have a bleed. You know, you could have one on the left or right in focus mode. In readability mode, you can only have a bleed out to the right, but you have tons of room to add your bleeds. But the bottom line is if you wanna add supplemental text, uh, I say bleeds, bars, uh, if you want to add supplemental text, a bar is a great way to do this. It's like an inline footnote. Uh, these things are, are useful from time to time, and I will show you how to create them. So let's see, we've got, it's in the list section, which is, here we go, lists. All right. So here we've got bleed style equals orange, and we do have a bar, this right here. This is a bar, and this is what a bar looks like when it's presented in line with none of the uh, special styling associated with it. So if we select this, we can see that the bar class has been deployed on it. If we can deselect it, now it's not a bar. If we were to, um, if we were to save this, and we'll take a look at this, you'll see that this text has moved back over underneath this other paragraph, or actually above the, that paragraph. But if we want to instead make this a bar, all we do is highlight the text that we'd like to make a bar, and go to focus content styles, select bar, and boom, that text will now be presented as a bar on screens that are wide enough to accommodate them. What's cool about this is whether this bar appears within a bleed or in regular content, if, it's, if it appears within regular content, it will have your, your alternate content color. By default, that is gray, as you see here, but um, you know, within bleeds, this color is calibrated to work with the background color of the bleed itself. So that's a cool little adaptation that is automatically made for you uh, with Focus 1.0. Anyhow, back to it here. It's really easy to make a bar. That's the process of doing it. And if you want to undo the bar, like I said, you just highlight your bar text and then deselect bar, and that's out of here. So that's a cool trip, uh, trick there from Focus 1.0. Let's look at another content style that is new. It's the button style. So these buttons have become very popular, and I use them all the time on my sites. I've got you know plenty of Focus users are using these as well. And Focus 1.0, this is finally easy to deploy. Uh, it works on any link element, so any link within your content that you would like to turn into a button, I will show you how to do that here. So we'll locate our link button. I'm gonna highlight it. Go to focus content styles, go to buttons. Right now, this is a, an action button. We can uh, remove these styles. Uh, so so no button, no, nothing is uh, appearing there. But if we highlight our text and we wanna turn this, so we'll, we'll just do this. We'll, We'll update it with uh, that style removed and we'll see that this is just a basic link, okay? And then now if we go back, we highlight the text that we'd like to turn into a link, or I mean a button, pardon. 
We go to buttons. We can make it any type of button we want. Um, save, delete, action, and update are just the names given to them. They don't actually perform those functions. Uh, it's supposed to be evocative of, of what color you can expect to get out of the result. So we have a save button. I, I make those green. I think green means go. That makes sense. Red means stop. That's what the delete, delete button is. Uh, these, and these are default colors. You can change these in the focus design options to suit your liking, but this, these are the defaults. Uh, we have an action button, which is blue, and an update button, which is yellow by default. So we'll make this an action button. We will hit the update, and then we'll check our results, and boom, I have now turned this basic link into a button, and I, you can use these in any piece of content in your WordPress on your WordPress website. Focus, uh, you know, you can convert this into a button by you, you know, using the method I just showed you here with the focus content styles selector. And that's how you can create buttons out of any link element. Okay, so that's super easy now that those are available from the, uh, you know, the content style selector in your WordPress editor. Uh, this works in Gutenberg as well. Again, I, I have to use this disclaimer in all my videos. I'm using the classic editor here. I much prefer it. It's faster, it's less clunky. I can get the results I want more easily with the classic editor, but this stuff also works in Gutenberg as well if you prefer that absolute hog of an editor, all right? Uh, another thing, this one's pretty cool. This one kind of uh, came out of nowhere, but in, here to four, the, for the first two years of Focus's existence, you could create a featured WordPress featured image for any post, and it would display up to the full usable width of your layout. By default, the usable width of a Focus layout is 1,040 pixels wide. Works well on desktop devices, and then you know it just shrinks down to fit whatever device you're you're browsing on, so it's just an iPad, iPhone, whatever. But people have asked, well, what if I want my featured uh, featured images to go edge to edge, regardless of the screen size. We want them to, to fill up the full width of the browser window. Well, now Focus 1.0 has a new option to accommodate this, and it's under the content and display settings, and we go to global layout elements. No, we don't. I lied. Pages and posts. Oh, so, okay, so under pages and posts, we have a new uh, display setting here called featured images. And we have two different display styles you can use. The first one is the default convention that is the way Focus has always worked. It's the natural image size. Uh, it's not it's not blown up beyond its, its native size. It's presented as is. And the maximum width it can be is the uh, total layout width, like I said, which is 1,040 pixels. I will try to give you a representation of this. Here it is. It's the blue section here is the is the total layout width. This particular image that appears here is not wide enough to fill it up, so it does not. But if it were wider, it would fill up that space. But if we instead use the full device width display style, the image will be stretched to fill up that whole space uh, if it is necessary to be stretched. Uh, if not, it will just display and it'll fill up the whole thing. So let's check that out. Here we go. Refresh, bam, and there you go. This featured image now spans the full usable or full width of the device, and all featured images now will appear that way. So let's refresh, and now you can see that this is a basic blog page. Uh, you can see things looking a little different now. That's a uh, an interesting display conceit, and this works whether you're running focus mode or readability mode. We'll switch to focus mode just to show you the deal. And boom, so you can see it works in focus mode, it works in readability mode, and this is just, if, if this is the type of uh, presentation you want, this full width, huge image, big impact sort of thing, uh, this is how you can achieve it. You just set your featured images to display full device width. One thing to note, if you're going to do this, really big images are the number one performance killer on the internet. Okay, so if you're going to use this display setting, you need to make sure that you compress or optimize and then compress all the images that you're going to use before you upload them to your WordPress website. If you do not compress them, you, you might be serving an image that's three, four, five times larger than it needs to be, and that will really slow down your pages, especially on users who are accessing your site on mobile devices. All right, so make sure you optimize your images. You, need, you should optimize every image anyway, but the bigger the image, the more critical it is to do so, and this is one area where you're likely to run into problems if you do not practice optimization. Okay, let's see. Uh, next, we've got focus mode centering options, 
and what the heck is that? So in focus mode, you uh, so a shift. If you go from readability mode to focus mode, what you get is your your header area, your site title, and your site tagline are centered in the browser. Your navigation unit is centered in the browser. Your headlines are centered. Your sub headlines are centered, uh, and the column of text is centered. And also your footer. When you get to the bottom, your footer content is also centered. But an interesting thing occurs as uh, device widths get smaller. So let's illustrate this. So I'll move this down to some actual text. Here we go. So as the device width shrinks, we'll go back to big, you'll notice that this subheadline is going to jag over to the left. Oh, I've got it set in centered mode already. Well, generally, if the if this gets small, you'll have the title and tagline the way it used to work. Pardon. In all previous editions of Focus, if you got the browser, you know, the the device width too small, this stuff would all jag over to the left to create a solid left side anchor, which is generally considered a good design practice, uh, especially for for helping people scan content. But a lot of people have come to me and said, Chris, I really would like this stuff to remain centered if I'm using focus mode. And so focus 1.0 includes an option to force that to, to be the case. If we go up to, to focus uh, to a content presentation settings, and if we are using focus mode, we have something here called focus layout centering. Um, Basically, this affects all those elements I said, your, your header, your navigation, your footer, and, and certain elements within your content. You can choose to have these centered on all devices. and So it's layout centering. That'll do your header, navigation, and footer. And then your content centering will center your headlines and subheadlines on all devices. So like stuff like, let's see, these. These are centered here, but if we change that setting to be left aligned, we can see that those are now to the left when the device width is small enough. If it gets big enough, it'll center them, but if it's small enough, it moves them to the left. You may or may not want this behavior, um, so now you have the option to choose how you would like that stuff to behave. You can have it stay centered, and that way it will stay centered everywhere. That's more of a consistent presentation across all devices. Um, it's strictly a preferential thing, but now you have the power to choose exactly how you want these elements to display. So that's a nice little little feature of Focus 1.0. And just for completeness, we will uh, illustrate here the layout centering. If we if we have that left aligned on smaller devices, watch how the header and navigation unit work once the device width gets too small. Bam. Now they go over to the left. This, this arrangement, uh, while I understand why some people might find it... Um, maybe not favorable. Uh, it actually is easier to determine exactly how stuff's gonna behave on smaller screens. So it's a little bit more bulletproof, but um, the way this stuff is baked into the Focus 1.0 cake, it's all gonna work perfectly for you, so you don't have to worry about that. That's why this stuff is now in focus in the 1.0 edition. Uh, it's because it is bulletproof, it is going to work. All right. Now we got one more thing here that is new in Focus 1.0, but a caveat here, this is not going to work on existing Focus sites unless you perform a specific modification that I will cover for you in detail in a separate video. So all I'm going to do is illustrate the functionality here, but if you want to uh, include this stuff in a legacy Focus website, you will have to watch my other video and do a couple of implementation steps before this stuff will work for you. But for now, let's take a look at what it is because I think you're going to like it. So if you are running your website with a static front page template, which is very common these days. In fact, I'd say it's more common than just having a basic blog. Um, you can, so like uh, all over the rest of your site, you might have uh, you know posts and pages. You might have a byline here telling who the author is, showing the date that the post was written, this kind of thing. Here's a you know author, date number of comments, an edit thing. These are not always desirable elements to include on a static front page. And indeed, sometimes you don't even want the headline to appear. 
Uh, but you may still want to be able to control the content of your static front page from you know basic WordPress po uh, page. So, but so we want this outcome, but we just don't want to display this stuff. Uh, with previous versions of Focus, this was not super straightforward, removing the whole thing. There were reasons for that, but I have resolved <laughs> those reasons. And so now you can get rid of this whole area if you want and really tweak the display. To do this, we're gonna go into to the display options, pages and posts. We're gonna to go to pages and front page, all right? Uh, now we have these specific headline and byline controls. We can display headline and byline. We can display a headline only, or we can display no headline or byline. This is probably gonna be the most popular choice. This was the thing that was most requested. So let's show you what that looks like. We're gonna save it. We're gonna hold shift and click refresh and boom. Now we have a super clean, super clean static front page with no headline area, no extra white space here that shouldn't be there. Some people had performed CSS uh, adaptations or whatever in the past to do to create a similar effect to this without showing the headline, but there was some undesirable white space left over. This update will resolve all that stuff, makes it one click easy to, to get the results you want. So I think you guys are really gonna like that. But like I said, if you're trying to do this on existing focus site, a focus site you've been running for any length of time, even one month, one year, two years, whatever it is, you will need to make some adaptations that I will show you in a separate video to make this stuff work in your site. But if you're just installing focus fresh, brand new on a new site, this stuff is all going to work for you out of the box and you will be good to go. All right, fam. Thanks for watching. Be sure to grab focus 1.0 today. And if you're so inclined, check out my other video on this update where I teach you how to in, uh, implement the front page headline display option on your site. All right. Thanks for watching. Peace.